last year I started teaching on giving uh, and Christian stewardship uh, when it's first fruits time. Uh, because uh, giving seems to be like a simple thing to do, it's, it's just giving. But it's far more complicated than just giving because our attitudes are involved and God's expectation is involved, God's blessing is involved. So it's not just about what you feel like doing, uh, it has to be done right and it has to be done the way God uh, uh, wants us to do it and God has to be honored at the end of our giving. So today I'm going to talk about four kinds of givers. Four kinds of givers. And uh, we will all uh, determine which kind we are. And, and hopefully uh, all of us can learn and we can improve on our giving and do things in a, an intentional and deliberate way that brings glory to God. There are many things we have in life that are precious, but I think the most precious things we have in life uh, that determine what we achieve in life and how our life turns out is our time, is our talent, and is our treasure. Our time, our talent, and our treasure. And these three are so important. Time is so precious. Talent is so precious. Your treasure, your money, your acquisitions, they are so precious. They are so precious that none of us wants to waste any of these things. You don't want to waste your time. You don't want to waste your, your treasure. You don't want to waste your talent. Because when you waste them, you're wasting your, your life, the entirety of your life. And because we are particular about our time and our talent and our treasures, we, we sometimes take possession of them uh, in a very hard way, in a very tough way, and don't want any of these things to go out of us. We don't want to give away time. We don't want to give away our talent. We don't want to give away our treasure. But as Christians, we also recognize that our talent, our time, and our treasure belongs to God. As important and precious as they are, they belong to God and he has given them to us as, as stewards. That means we manage what he has given to us. It doesn't belong to us. We are managers of it. We manage the time. We manage our talent. We manage our treasure. And so when it comes to giving, uh, these are the things I want you to have in mind as we talk about the four kinds of givers. The first kind of giver uh, is in uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 2. Matthew chapter 6, verse 2, this is Jesus speaking on the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, and he gets to chapter 6 and starts talking about things we should do right uh, as Christians. And he says, therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. Jesus is talking about some people and the way they give. So the first kind of giver is those who give to show off what they have. Those who give to show off what they have. There are people whose giving is motivated by showing off. And they use this uh, giving to make themselves feel important, to make themselves feel special. And in the days of Jesus, uh, there were people like that. He called them hypocrites. And uh, normally uh, what they, those people would do was when they were going to church, they hired people to go ahead of them and sing their praises, praise singers. And some uh, would have people with trumpets, blowing the trumpet to announce their presence in the house of the Lord, in the synagogue or in the streets. Uh, and so these were uh, people who really advertised their giving. And there, there are people who are like that. 
they are influenced by publicity and applause. For whatever they give, they want publicity for it and they want to be applauded. For such people, they only give when every eye is on them. When they can be seen. When people can see they gave. They cannot give silently. They can't give quietly. They, it has to be advertised. And you know, our world has entered the social media age. And the social media age is, is, uh, is determined or influenced by self-promotion. Self-promotion. And that's why people promote everything. They buy a shirt, they promote it on social media. Ah, look at my new shirt. They, they, they eat some food. Oh, look at the food I ate in the restaurant. They will never tell us the miserable ones they've been eating. Uh, and, 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 you know, uh, something happens. Oh, because the social media era thrives on everybody blow your horn. And there is some value in advertising yourself and, and letting people know what you're doing and what you have. But when it comes to God, when it comes to giving to God, self-advertising is a liability. It's not an asset. So you cannot treat giving in the house of the Lord the same way you treat your life on social media. It's not about publicity. It's not about applause. It's not about people watching you and clapping for you and telling you, well done, well done. You have done so well. And Jesus says something that for people who give to show off, their reward is the praise they receive from men. So the clap is all you get. And, and if you're on social media, the likes are all you will get. God says, I'm not involved in that. If you give because you want publicity, yes, you get the publicity. The newspapers will publish it. People will talk about it. But I'm out. I'm out because your, your reward is what people give you. So if that is all you are looking for, and by all means, give to show off. If that is all you're looking for, if you don't want God's blessing, you don't want God's favor, you don't want God to reward you, then do it publicly and all of us will clap for you and that's all the reward you want or all the reward you get. But you know, we don't give simply because we want people to clap for us because after people have clapped for us, they'll go home and sleep. And you have to deal with your life. The one you really want to clamp for you is Jehovah God Almighty. He's the one who must reward you. He's the one who must take notice of what you do. So if we are motivated by applause, we are motivated by publicity, then our giving is going to be like those guys Jesus is talking about. He calls them hypocrites. And I know in Christ's temple there is no hypocrite. Okay, I'll say it again. I said, in Christ's temple, there is no hypocrite. You are the best church on the planet. You are good people. You are good Christians. You love the Lord. And nobody gives for show off. It happens in other churches, not here. Oh, I thought you would be happy that it doesn't happen here. Or you think it happens here. Or, or maybe you are one of them. All right. So there are people who show off. Thankfully, uh, uh, I don't believe they are here. Uh, but if that is your motivation, you want applause, you want uh, publicity, you want people to take note that you have given, then Jesus says your reward is from men. And I don't think that's why we give our time, our treasure, or our talent. Then the second kind of a giver, second kind of giver. Luke chapter 14, verse 12. Then he also said to him, who invited him, when you give a dinner or a supper, do not ask your friends, your brothers, your relatives, nor rich neighbors, lest they also invite you back and you be repaid. Jesus has a way of saying things in places that can really make you unnerved. He's saying this to somebody who's invited him to a party. And Jesus is saying, 
If, if you have a party, don't just invite people who can pay you back or people who can honor what you have done for them. So that gives us the clue as to the second kind of givers. There are those who give with expectation to be paid back. They give with expectation to be paid back. It can be all kinds of giving, but what you're looking for is reciprocity. They, they, they want that when they give, uh, uh, they, they'll receive back. I would never forget years ago, uh, somebody said, you know, pastor, when we come to church and we give offering, it's like we are doing susu. So that when we are in need, the church will also give us back. A church must be responsible to its members. And people must be responsible to appreciate what is done for them. And when somebody does a good thing for you, you must be mindful to remember the good they have done for you. But that should not be our motivation for giving. Although people must remember to respond well to people who give you something. I mean, if somebody helped you in a time of need, of course, when they are in a time of need, you help them. But our motivation as a giver should never simply be because we want people to pay us back. And that's what Jesus is talking about. And the people who give with expectation to be paid back, they are influenced by control and influence. They want to gain influence. They want to have access to certain important circles of life. They want people to owe them. So, sometimes people give in certain quarters because they want to enter those quarters. They want to have access to that space. They, they want somebody's friendship. They want somebody to invite them to a party next year. They want somebody to put them on their mailing list or on their phone contacts. But that's not why we give. That's what Jesus is saying. Because the essence of giving is not to get people to give you back. The essence of giving is to do good. That's it. Do good for what? To be good. So after I've done good, then what again? You've done good. That is, that is what giving is about. It's, it's about doing something because it is good to do it. Giving to God because it is good to give to the Lord. Helping somebody in need because it is good to help somebody in need. That's all. That's the biggest motivation. And Jesus says, if you are doing good or we are giving in church because we want to be paid back. So when the church uh, announces who are really good givers, your name will be mentioned. Yes, it's important for the church to recognize who gives, but our giving should not be so that we will be recognized as givers. I hope you, are, you get it. Each one of us has a responsibility. Somebody does good for me, I have to do good for them. But their motivation should not be because they want me to do good to them. Their motivation be, must be, I want to do good. My motivation also should be, I want to do good. All of us must do good, but we don't do good in expectation of reward. That's Bible. You know, many times I wish the Bible is not the Bible, you know. I wish I can go to the Bible and correct it. Delete. Delete. Because this is not convenient. You know, and sometimes you who are preaching the word, you yourself know that this thing is hitting you. But we have no option but to say what the word says. And the word says, if you are doing good with expectation to be paid back, that's not the best way. And for such people... Jesus says their reward is what people give back to them. That's their reward. 
what people give back to them. So God says, that's all you'll get. I'm not in there. But people will do you good. People will be nice to you. They invite you to their Easter party or their New Year party. They will talk well of you. But that's all you get. But I don't think that is the reason why we give an offering in church so that people will speak well of us. I think we give because we love God and the reward we are looking for is not people speaking well of us. The reward we are looking for is not people clapping for us. We want something more than that. So the second kind of giver is the one who gives with expectation to be paid back. The third kind, Luke chapter 18, verses 11 and 12. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. I like that. He didn't, he's praying with himself. So this whole prayer of the Pharisee, is, it, it doesn't even focus on God. It, it, this is, you know, you know people do that kind of prayer these days. They are praying with themselves. Because they go and learn big, big words. Oh, omnipotent tetragrammaton, oh God. You are praying with yourself, my friend. Oh, you've learned some, oh, some nice ways to pray for, for people to know that you know how to pray. You're praying with yourself. That's what this guy is doing. He's praying with himself. Not praying to God. Praying with himself. He's the initiator and the listener to his prayer. <laughs> oh, Lord, save us. There are many times we pray with ourselves. Whilst you are praying, you are listening to your own prayer and you are proud. You know, have you been in that place where you are praying, you are listening to your own prayer, you say, I can pray all. <laughs> hey, especially when people are praying in the local language. They are praying in Chi or Ga or Eve or Fanti. And they go to the portmanteau down and pick up some powerful words. Deep, deep Chi words. And you listen and say, hey, these words still exist. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the prayer is laced with proverbs. And when they finish, they themselves know I have prayed. You were just praying with yourself. <laughs> you were the listener to your own prayer. The hearer of your own prayer. Not God. So that's what this guy is doing, this Pharisee. But you know, they are not in this church. All these people, they are in another church. They are not members of this church. So go and tell them after church that they shouldn't do that. But peradventure. If they are here, I hope that you will learn. So, so, he's praying with himself. So he says, the first he stood and prayed thus with himself. God, listen to the prayer. God, I thank you that I'm not like that other man, like other men, extortionist, unjust, adulterous, or even this tax collector. Can you imagine you are in a prayer meeting and you are saying, God, I thank you I'm not like those people. And this guy, I'm, I thank you I'm not like him. Lord, have mercy. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. That's his prayer. So who are the third kind of givers? Those who give to fulfill their religious duty. The Pharisee is proud and you can, you, can, you can hear the sense of superiority and arrogance because I follow the rules. I pray. I tithe. I fulfill my responsibilities. God, you must hear me because I've tithed. I've paid you. You must listen. <laughs> uh, 
That's what he's saying. And he's speaking with such audacity because I have paid my tithe. And I have followed the rules. You must listen. If you don't listen to me, you are not God. Have you prayed any of those prayers where God is God dependent on how you feel? You are not God. God, if you don't answer this prayer, then you are not God. Hey! You alone that just was born just now, you want to erase God <laughs> because of your need. If people had been erasing God from Adam, you will not come to find him. God is not God because of you. He's God all by himself. So that is what this guy is saying. So people like that, they are influenced by legalism and superiority. They do exactly as it is required because they, they are marking their spiritual points to use it. And they feel that by giving, they have become better than other people. Their giving is for competitive purposes. So what is the reward for such people? Their reward is a sense of self-righteousness. That's all they get. They feel righteous. They feel pompous. They feel big. They feel superior. They walk with superiority. Because they have paid God. God, you know I did it. You owe me, oh God. God owes you. The one who created you owes you. The one who gives you breath owes you. Because you gave money. Then everybody must take what they gave. Take the money and he will take his breath. Can you, can you imagine if God says, okay, I owe you money. You also owe me life. So I'll take the life and afterwards, I'll give you the money. <laughs> so he takes the life and then he says, oh, where are you? I want to give you the money. <laughs> it's good to tithe. We've, we, we do it. We give our first fruits. We honor God. We give our friends. But doesn't put God in our debt. And it doesn't make us better people or Christians. In fact, the Lord himself says, after you've done all of these, you should say, I am an unworthy servant. I have only done what was required of me. I'm an unworthy servant. I've only done what was required of me. That should be our attitude. When people think we've done so well, we just say, you know, if, if God had not given me that opportunity, I wouldn't be able to do this. If God had not given me that job, I wouldn't have been able to do this. If God had not come through for me from in my village and taken me out of the village and given me education so I can get to where I am, who am I to be able to do these things? We do what we do because God did what he did. And he gave us the opportunity so we can give back to him. So we don't give simply because there is an obligation and we don't give to score points with other Christians. It's good to be a tither. It's good to give your first fruits. It's, give, it's good to give your offerings. It's good to be a generous Christian. But don't do it by looking down on other people because when you do that, you've you received your, your reward. Your reward is self-righteousness. They'll call you Mr. Holy. Mr. Righteous. That's about all you get. Final. This is the one we must all seek for. John chapter 12 verse 3. And then verses 7 and 8. The story of Mary. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard. 
anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. And you know that after that, uh, people complain about the extravagance of her giving. And verse 7 and 8, Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you have with you always, but me you do not have always. The fourth group are those who give wholeheartedly to the Lord. Those who give wholeheartedly to the Lord. This is genuine giving. It is when you see your giving as unto the Lord. It's when you don't hold back what you want to give to God. Mary didn't hold back. She broke the bottle of the alabaster jar and it couldn't be sealed back. Everything had to be poured out. It was extravagant, but she did it for the Lord. Giving wholeheartedly to the Lord is where he wants us to be. And she wasn't really impressed by whether people would like what she did or not. As a matter of fact, people criticized what she did. Did. Those who give wholeheartedly to the Lord are influenced by worship and service. Worship and service. They see what they give to the Lord as worship. In the Old Testament, it will be considered a burnt offering. It's gone. They just give it. And there is no remembrance of it. It's ashes. It's gone. In the sight of man, it's gone. In the sight of God, it's not gone. So whether it's our time, our talent, or our treasure we are giving, it must be wholehearted. You can't give and complain at the same time. You can't give and cry. You can't give and criticize. If you're going to give to the Lord, give to the Lord. If you're not going to give to the Lord, don't give to the Lord. But if you want to do it right, then the attitude must be right. There will always be critics of givers. You know, these days when uh, I hear people criticizing those who give, you know, you go to church and you give your money away. You know, you know people forget that they also give money. Some give to all kinds of things I don't want to mention in this pulpit. But they give, they, they, they give their money away. But people can't understand why somebody goes to church and give an offering. And sometimes you can get a bit agitated with all the criticism. But remember, when Mary gave her offering, there was criticism, there was murmuring. People said, Mary, what do you mean? Why, why do you throw this at the feet of Jesus? Could have been used for something else. Could have been given to the poor. Anytime people come in with, oh, it should have been given to the poor, you, you sense the hypocrisy. Because people who really give don't complain. People who really give to the poor, they don't complain about those who are not giving to the poor. They just do their job. When people complain, it means they do nothing. But they want to take comfort in criticism. Those who really do stuff, they don't complain. They don't. People who are doing well don't complain about people doing well. It's those who are not doing well who complain about those who are not doing well. If you are generous, you will not complain about other people who are not generous. You just do your stuff. But the reason why people complain is because they're doing nothing. And the sense of guilt is what is driving all their criticism. And that's what is happening in Mary's case. Sense of guilt. And apart from that, the Bible says that Judas, who was complaining, was the one who received the money for the poor. Mr. Judas. And the scripture is particular to say that he wasn't honest with that money. So his complaint is not even for the poor, it's for his own stomach. You know the way people use 
all kinds of care offs for their complaint. But this woman gave all for worship and for service. If you give your time to the Lord, give it well, give it wholeheartedly. If you give your talent, give it wholeheartedly. If you give your money, give it wholeheartedly. Whatever you give to the Lord, give it wholeheartedly. Let it be from your heart. And what is the reward? Their reward is God's presence and God's favor. God's presence and God's favor. God said in Genesis chapter 15 verse 1 to Abraham. He said, Abraham, I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. Our reward is not things. Our reward is God. The Lord is my reward. And when he is your reward, in him is everything you are looking for. So in our giving, we are not looking just for things. But we are looking for the Lord to be our reward. The Lord to be our favor. His presence in our lives. His goodness with us. There is nothing more blessed in life than I am with you, says the Lord. I mean, what more do you want? If God says, I am with you. Where can I not go? If God says, I am with you, what can I not do? If God says, I am with you, where can I not reach to? All I want is God, his presence, his favor, and then I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So what are we looking for when we give? We're looking for God, for his acceptance, for his applause, instead of men applauding us. For God to say, I will pay you back. Can you imagine if God says, I owe you? Yeah, I owe you because you gave. We, you didn't say, God, you owe me. He says, I owe you. I will pay you back. And when God pays you back, it is good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. He outgives you in large proportions. High proportions. So today, which one of these four are you? We all want to be number four, isn't it? So if you're number three, start moving to four. If you're number two, start moving to four. If you're number one, start moving to four. That means that in all our giving, we must be conscious that this has to be wholehearted. This has to be to the Lord. There has to be worship. This has to be service. And God rewards us with his presence. This morning we have giving. And we will give again before the service is over. <laughs> but all of that is for God to reward us with himself. That wherever you are, he will be. Whatever battle you are involved in, he will fight with you. Your enemies are his enemies. Your friends are his friends. He said to Abraham, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. He didn't say, Abraham, curse people. He says, you let them curse you. And I take up the task. Because I'm with you. I am your shield. I'm your exceedingly great reward. May the Lord be our reward. May he be the satisfaction of our soul. The fulfillment of our heart's desires. May his presence be with us wherever we are. May he go with us and come with us. May he be the man of war for us in our battles. May the Lord be our shield defending us against every attack of the enemy. We just heard and we prayed about it that there is the threat of a global food shortage. But the Lord is our provider. The Lord is our provider. The Lord is our provider. He provides in the desert. He provides in farming. He provides in the dry season. He provides when there is drought. When the Lord is our 
reward. We hear of bad news, but he delivers us from it. And this morning, I pray that the Lord God Almighty will be your reward for all your giving, for all your stewardship, for all the talent you give in the house of the Lord. Those of you who serve in departments, musicians, band, ushers, uh, intercessors, everybody, just giving your time, giving your talent, giving your time, giving your time. The Lord is your reward and he will reward you. Don't look to man for reward. You will miss it. Yes, we must reward you. Yes, we must honor you. But you must not demand it. God will reward you. He is your reward. He is your shield. He is your exceedingly great supply. And for every need of yours, for every need of yours, for every need of yours, before you even talk about it, before you even pray about it, before you even lift up prayer, may the Lord hear you, may the Lord answer you, may the Lord provide for you, may the Lord deliver you, may the Lord strengthen you, may the Lord heal you, may the Lord touch your children, may the Lord touch your grandchildren, may the Lord touch your business, may the Lord touch you going in and coming out, may the Lord protect you in the air and on the ground, may the Lord give you safety, may his presence surround you wherever you go. The Lord is your shield and your exceedingly great reward. Amen.